Hi, welcome to Cypher Street. My name is Bruce Fenton. I'm Naomi Brockwell, and recently Bruce and I went to Boston for the MIT Bitcoin Expo, chatted with a bunch of awesome people. I ran into Peter Todd, and uh, so I wanted to take the opportunity to interview him about a bunch of things. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's got, he's got a lot of knowledge. He's been involved in Bitcoin a long time, and he's been involved in tech even longer than that. There's the famous post that he had when he was talking to Hal Finney and Adam Back back when he was like 14, 15 years old. Yes, he got into uh, crypto when he was about three years old. So <laughs> been in it for a long time. But it was great chatting with him and we discussed the term cypherpunk and how it applies to Bitcoin. Here it is. What is a cypherpunk? Well, first of all, he had cyberpunk which was sort of the sci-fi-ish genre of cyber world and internet and all that. And then people who actually knew something about technology then kind of changed that into cypherpunk, mm -hmm. as in people who are interested in cryptography or ciphers. Crypto, the way we know it, didn't really exist until the beginning of the 90s, basically. And that's kind of where public recognition that cryptography was even kind of possible started coming into um, into the public sphere. I mean, things like PHP is an example, and the battles over having encryption available to the public. And would you say that that's really where the cypherpunk movement got their momentum, because they all banded together uh, to fight what the government absolutely. was trying to do? No, I think that's absolutely how it got that inertia. Without that, it would be tough to kind of have a rallying cry. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't see that about so many other aspects of tech, but because it became politicized, ironically because the government fought it, mm -hmm. it became a thing. Yeah, and uh, they ended up winning. They won for a while. In the Snowden leaks, it kind of came out how the NSA had been backdooring crypto implementations. Hmm. So that was probably their response to winning. Well, you know, we can't win on restricting the technology, but we can win on breaking it. Wow. You know, we can't break the math, but we can break the implementations. Of course, it didn't quite go the way the NSA wanted. Most of their breaks were pretty obvious and people noticed. It's funny because they're talking about that in Australia at the moment and putting back doors in um, devices. And we say this as well, if I mean, this is... A the Australian one isn't even just putting back doors in the devices. You know, that would be one thing. The Australian one is, yeah, we can just compel you to break your shit. It's just the most ludicrous overreach. But, you know, I mean, what do you expect from bureaucrats? Now it seems like Bitcoin may be a continuation of this movement, or would you say that it's quite a distinct movement? Like, can we call this new group of people who are fighting for privacy and financial autonomy, can we call them cypherpunks if they're coding? Or no, is there another? No, you call them tech workers. Tech workers! <laughs> no, I, I think the, the majority of non-advertising driven tech just takes privacy as given. I mean, it's not privacy, it's privacy security. It's just privacy is a standard part of security. The Snowden leaks reveal terrible, horrible things done by the government. And then everyone didn't care. That's what Snowden oh, said he care. was most afraid of, that nah. he, this would come out and people would forget. I feel like people have just but forgotten. I, I think that it's, it's more complex than that. The tech industry completely steamrolled their ability to go and wiretap on the scale that they did and replaced it with, of course, advertising, which works very differently. Advertising is many ways you know, in the whole advertising industry around is many ways. The private industry, for their own reasons and their own incentives, replicating what the NSA would have liked to do. Right, right. But within the tech industry, lots of people are very, very against this. You know, Facebook is not a popular com company. I do see a lot of complacent people out there who are not fighting the system. I think it's more things like financial privacy where people haven't seen the outcome of this. Like people, you know, average people think Facebook is creepy and weird but they don't think Visa and MasterCard are creepy and weird. Yeah. It'll take some event to make people wake up to that. In other countries, they do. I mean, they've, they saw that. And, you know, if you look at Europe, parts of Europe recognize that financial privacy is important because they saw that used by the Nazis to persecute Jews on a huge scale. You know, parts of the Middle East probably are seeing financial privacy as important because that's one of the ways ISIS got territory by rolling into towns, going off to the nearest banks and getting the financial details, on paper in that case. But that's how you figure out, well, who do you target next? Yeah. You know, thousands of people probably very directly died due to lack of financial privacy because ISIS knew who to target. 
This isn't a narrative we often hear. No, it really isn't. Visa and MasterCard do not want you to hear this. And they have a lot of power. I mean, you have people... And they have a lot of incentive. Yeah, they directly make money, just like Facebook off violating your privacy. Absolutely. And I mean, you definitely see them trying to curtail this narrative. You see the, them curtailing places like Patreon, people who are making videos, talking about this stuff. You see them curtailing uh, Subscribestar, demonetizing on Google. They wield a lot of power. There's sort of a segment of society that's becoming very much anti-free speech right now. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's as popular a segment of society as that part of society would like you to believe. Yeah. But there's strong pushes to deplatform people, including financially on a big scale. So maybe we do need that rallying cry of the cypherpunks to come back in so we can all band together and, uh, and fight this thing once more. I mean, I this, this is a big part up. of why I'm in Bitcoin, you know, and I've, I believe this really since like high school. Yeah, let's hope that technologists have what it takes and have the stamina needed to fight this, uh, this coming battle. Yeah, cool. me too. Thank you so much for chatting with me.